building. This topic we are discussing about middle plate fractures. This topic, the learning outcomes mainly, the clinical features regarding about the injuries of soft tissue of the patient and oral mucosa, injuries of the jaws including the dental fractures, injuries to the zygoma, orbit, nose and the cranial base, and the kinds of the orbit that are associated with the orbital fractures. And to analyze the clinical and radiographic findings on the maxillofacial trauma region. And what are the principles of management, conservative management, and surgical management for the maxillofacial trauma? So already we studied the fracture of mandible. In this middle third of fractures, the anatomy is basically regarding about the maxillofacial region. What are the bones associated? Mainly the maxilla. Then the frontal bone, psychoma, nasal bone, ethmoid, like that. So, mostly the injury affecting on the psychoma, maxillary, frontal bone, nasal bone, that's been out also. So, the middle side of the face. The region of facial skeleton bounded by superior pain. The line across the front of zygomatic suture, across the front of nasal and the front of maxillary suture, inferior by the maxillary opposite pain. These are the main sutures associated with the middle third of the fracture. The applied anatomy mainly the fractures happen on the Facial buttress. The facial buttress are divided into two that are vertical and horizontal buttress. So these are the areas that mostly the fracture site can be seen. So the vertical buttress mainly by the nasomaxillary, psychometric maxillary, turbomaxillary and vertical mandible. These are the four buttresses seen on the vertical region. Nasomaxillary, psychotomy maxillary, turbomaxillary and on the mandible. Okay, go to the horizontal buttress, you can see the uh, frontal bar, infraorbital rim or nasal bones, hard part and the maxillary alveolus so supra orbital infraorbital and the dental process holder and the palatal region the main applied anatomy in this you know, medical state fractures can be stand kinds of force on the medical vertical direction but not on the horizontal these are the most fragile one and it acts as a pushing effect for the trauma because the direction of the force towards the cranium from the anterior and the anterior lateral direction. There will be a 45 degree slope of cranial base and low energy fractures can produce similar fracture lines. So, what are the main reasons for the max, uh, middle state fracture? That's due to road traffic accidents, assaults, work related, falls, sports. <clears throat> the pathophysiology there are the two types high impact and low impact. High impact means proorbital region will be the most force happen on the injury and symphysis of the mandible next to frontal and angle of the mandible. These are the four regions for the high impact injury. Low impact on the psychoma and the nasal bone. So, the middle third fracture is divided into three. The leaf of one, leaf of two 
and LIFO3. LIFO1 means the horizontal fracture of the maxilla at the level of nasal fossa. So the fracture line can be seen on the LIFO1 is from the lateral border of the pyriform aperture along the lateral wall of the maxillary sinus then goes to the maxillary tuberosity and goes to the tergoid place so it starts from the lateral border of the pyriform aperture along the lateral wall of the maxillary sinus and the maxillary tuberosity and the tergoid plates In D42, the max fracture line can be seen, it's like a pyramidal fracture, occurs on the maxilla, nasal bone, and medial aspect of the orbits. So, the lower level fracture is called a LIFO1, pyramidal fracture is a LIFO2. So, the fracture line starts from the nasofrontal suture, let's see in the diagram, nasofrontal suture through the lacrimal bones. Lacrimal bones and across the infraorbital rim region of the psychotic maxillary suture and infinitely across the line of parallel to the leaf out one, but the, it's like a high level. <coughs> so it starts from the nasofrontal suture, lacrimal bone across the infraorbital margin. Sometimes it will indirect to the infraorbital foramen also. And the psychomatic maxillary suture and infinitely across the line parallel like to the leaf for one, but, it, uh, but in a higher level. So, this is the leaf for two fracture line. This diagram we can see which are the areas mostly intact. Leaf for three, it's a craniofacial distinction. The fracture line starts from through the frontonasal suture same frontonasal suture along the middle part of the orbit along the middle wall of orbit and goes to the optic foramen so it starts from the frontonasal and the middle wall of orbit and goes to the optic foramen in of the optic foramen it's given the orbital fissure to separate the tergoid plates laterally to separate from the Frondo psychomatic suture. So it goes down and goes to the frondo psychomatic suture. These are the main areas fractured. So they will be intact of the psychomatic bone also. <coughs> One fracture is a loyal fracture, so this is the pyramidal fracture, it may intact to the infraorbital foramen also. Front and nasal suture and goes to the medial wall of the orbit, and goes to the optic foramen, goes to the front of segmenting, and goes to the tergoid plates. So, what are the pre operative evaluation for the fracture? First, check for the laceration, there will be a lot of laceration can be seen on this type of military fracture and there will be depression of the skull, asymmetry of the face, discharge from the ear or the nose, there will be silence of rhinorway or bleeding will be there, palpate the supraorbital, lateral orbit, infraorbital ribs, there will be fracture on the infraorbital or the lateral orbit, while there will be chance of the step different on the supraorbital and psychomatic arch will be depression on the psychomatic arch nasal bones will be fractured maxilla and mandible will be fractured occlusion will be rearranged there will be step deformity will be there and there will be salty test will be due to series of rhinorrhea the main signs and symptoms for the leaf out fractures is gross edema bilateral circumorbital ecchymosis dish face Posterior gagging occlusion, tenderness over the areas of the bone separation, trismus, 
ideas of rhinorrhea nasal skeletal reorganization these are the main signs and symptoms on the middle third fracture you can see on the leaf for one leaf for two and leaf for three and there will be lengthening of the face or the middle third fracture for the clinical features we can see on the leaf for one fracture it invited and easily missed can occur on the conjunction with the other leaf foot fractures nasal orbital ethmoid that is called noe fracture psychomic maxillary complex or is the mc and can be seen unilateral or bilateral sometimes it will be seen on the unilateral sometimes it will be bilateral and may be associated with the paralysis the paralysis which can be seen not common but sometimes you can see so <clears throat> to go for inspection inspection of the leaf foot one fracture there will be swelling on the upper lip and there will be less edema to compare to the leaf foot two and the leaf foot three fracture increased vertical dimension of the face because there will be suppression of the leaf uh, bone the arrangement of the occlusion ecchymosis in the buccal sulcus beneath the psychomatic artery if you check on the intraoral you can see on the ecchymosis on the buccal sulcus and there will be palatal ecchymosis if we check on the palatal region that's called ecchymosis that is called during sign you can see in this photo there will be bluish black appearance seen on the palatal region there is the ecchymosis on the palatal on palpation there will be mobility of maxillae at the leaf for one level and if we check the capillaries on palpation there will be cracked pot sound on the percussion if we check on percussion on the maxillae you can see cracked pot sound these are the most things we can see on the leaf for one fracture Going to the leaf foot two and leaf foot three, so the common sign is like the close edema, balloony or moist face, around the appearance, circumorbital edema and the ecchymosis, subconjunctival ecchymosis inside the cornea you can see on the bleeding, ecchymosis edema on the conjunctival region, flattening on the nasal place. There will be there will be fraction on the nasal bone, so there will be flattening on the nasal bridge. Tissue space deformity because the impact will go uh, comes to the third fracture, so most of the bones will fracture and goes inside. Gagging of occlusion, nasal is filled with the uh, blood. Lengthening of the face and mobility of the maxillary at the heat for two. Never. So if we check on the leaf foot one, there will be no in the uh, nasal bone fractures on there. So only on the lower level fracture you can see on the leaf foot one. But in the leaf foot two, mobility of the eye on the leaf foot two level. So in the segment will. Okay. You can see in the picture there will be circum orbital chemosis, a uh, little bit subconjunctal chemosis, and there will be. The loading of the face. You can see what is called circum orbital ecchymosis. It will be bluish black appearance seen on the lower uh, uh, eyelid region. That is called panda face. It look like the panda appearance. And you can see on the some kind of inside the cornea there will be bleeding on the corsets. Peculiar leaf for two fractures. Step deformity at the intraorbital margin. You can palpate on the intraorbital. There will be step deformity. I already mentioned the fracture lines goes to the medial and goes to the intraorbital margin and go downwards. Might be below or 
uh, indirect with the infra or pedal foramen and post posterior. So there will be step deformity will be the paresthesia of the jig that is due to infra or pedal foramen indent. Diplopia or double vision will be there and of the almost will be there. No alteration of the level of the eye. <coughs> Mobility at the infra or pedal or the nasal region. Here's a flick. Detect zygoma and zygomatic arch. On, we go for the D43 fracture, tenderness and the separation of the frontozygomatic suture, low lowering of the ocular level because there will be uh, diplopia will be there, telecanthus will be there, and lower uh, one of the eyes become uh, become low. Zygomatic arch fracture will be there. Mobility to the end face. Profuse years of rhinorrhea will be there for the leaf for three fracture line. Leaf for four is actually it's a modification by Robert Martini. Means if the leaf for plus any fractures goes to the cranial or on the frontal bone fracture that is called the leaf for four fractures. It's actually it's a modification because nowadays that in my road traffic accidents and the uh, injuries are uh, very common and there are a lot of other fractures involving to the frontal bone with the leaf foot fractures that's called leaf foot for fracture <coughs> so these are the clinical signs and symptoms for the leaf foot fracture now go for the inspection Normally, we are going for a CT scan or go for the radiographs. Radiographs, we have to normally take out occipital mandible at 10 degree. It's called the Campbell and Trambell lines. Check it out. If you check on Campbell and Trambell lines, uh, the Campbell lines means it's a five lines, four lines seen on the upper one, fifth line on the lower. Lower one is the Trambell line. So the first line starts from the frontal zygomatic suture, supraorbital margin, and goes to the frontal sinus and go to the other side. That's the first line. Second line is the zygomatic bone, zygomatic arch also might be uh, infraorbital margin, maxillary sinus, and goes to the other side. This one is the condyle, coronoid, maxillary sinus floor of nasal cavity and goes to the other side. There is only ramas, occlusion and goes to the other side. Fifth line is the lower border of the mandible. So, this can be seen on the oximeter and mental view 10 degree. Five lines are there. Fifth line is the Campbell lines. Four lines are Campbell lines. First one frontal zygomatic, supraorbital margin, frontal sinus, zygomatic arch, zygomatic bone, infraorbital margin, maxillary sinus, condyle, coronoid, maxillary sinus, floor of nasal cavity, ramus, <coughs> and the occlusion, fifth line, lower water of the mandible. These are the five lines. Next one is the maxillary fracture treatment. Initial treatment and definitely treatments are the initial treatment first this type of fracture there will be patient having difficulty in the brain in the brain because there will be muscle bleeding will be there. So secure uh, the airway, control the bleeding, elevation of head 40 to 60 degree, consult with the maxillary facial surgeon and also might be of the neurosurgeon because there will be senior sophomore will be there so there sometimes there will be head injury will be there so consult uh, the neurosurgeon and the surgeon also and consider the strong antibiotic coverage there will be high chance of the infection definitely treatment like a surgical exposure reduction immobilization and fixation 
most of the time there will be facial aceration will be there so there will be no any, uh, extra not needed on that approach we can fix the fracture surgical approaches mainly there are mucosal and dermalization mucosalization that means intra uh, intra oral or the <coughs> cell conjunctiva maxillary vestibular approach trans conjunctival approach dermal incision like uh, supra orbital incision keys temporal supra tarsal subsillary and coronal incision mostly the coronal incision there will be multiple fractures like a leaf or two or uh, uh, mostly leaf or three fracture with the frontal bone fracture this type of fractures we are going for the uh, by coronal incision it starts from the pre olga to the other side region so we can uh, declaw the under the uh, skin and we can identify the frontal bone and also the supra orbital margin nasal bone and the zygomatic uh, frontal zygomatic suture if so how will you reduce the fracture thickness it's called insulin bonder probes disc impaction forceps it's a pair of you know, instrument you can see there will be the curvature on the one side on its back end the curvature of uh, peak that will go inside to the whole cavity this will go to the nasal cavity so you can see this will go to the oral cavity and supports the palatal region the flattened surface goes to the nasal cavity and we can reduce the fractures and because my, my there will be lead for two fracture uh, or leaf out one fracture like you know there will be we want to stabilize the fracture segment using with the cross this impaction forces and also you can use the height and William forces to link it to the maxillary maxillary tuberosity region and after reduction, we can we fix direct osteosynthesis? Direct osteosynthesis means using with the multiplex and see wires, or using with the suspension wiring techniques like a frontal suspension, circumsagomatic, circumpalatal, intraorbital, pyriform aperture, or alveolar wiring. Extend fixation by cranial mandula and cranial maxillary fixation. Mostly we are the uh, point of fixation of the mini plates normally only the fracture seen on the front of segment we can use the, the mini plates and also we can use the tubular buttress i have uh, mentioned already frontal buttress and also on top particular uh, buttress and horizontal buttress will be there so we can stabilize the using with the l-shaped mini plates to the maxilla and the sigma or you uh, have many places using in the infra orbital will be fracture on the infra orbital ring and also to the frontal region also sometimes we can use on the there will be fracture on the nasal muscle we can use with the mini plates frontal suspension wiring is uh, suspension wiring normally first we will want to uh, stabilize the occlusion Operation can be actually using with the arch bar. After fixation of the arch bar, there will be a fracture on the low level or high level fracture. There will be so we want to stabilize using with the wiring. The wiring is pl uh, placed from the front of segmentic suture above. There will be fixed with the uh, bone and pass it the wire using with the below the Psychomatic arch and pass to the intra orally and fix it to the arch bar so it will go beneath the psychomatic bone and fix it to the front of psychomatic area. So this entire segment will pull up and we can reduce the fracture. So the instrument used for to passing the wire is called a bone abel.
Zic, dar că dar când se argumentează atunci de a vai dispărți bine de segmentic ars and fix to the ars per and pull it to the segmentic ars. Previously, the fixation on the frontal segmentic here, this one will pass to the segmentic ars. This is the intraorbital suspension, the vai is passed to the intraorbital and passed to the Uh, uh, this is the low level fracture line. Means in leave for one fracture line only. You can use the intraorbital suspension wire technique. Pyrofoam aperture. Most of the time, the wire is passed to the pyrofoam aperture and passed to the arch wire. This is the old technique uh, used. Nowadays, no, no one is using this type of techniques. But this type of wiring will use for the edangerous patients. Because in a dangerous patient there will be no <coughs> tooth. So we can we want to fix the uh, uh, to uh, fix the in the maxillary fixation using with the gunsmith. Gunsmith is the uh, in dangerous patient there will be a black white block. We have placed it. It's like a danger placed inside the or cavity and the danger we want to fix using with the pyrofoam aperture. Then only they can fix. Uh, the first word is the fixing for the mandible that is circum mandibular wire. This was the box frame uh, fixation. The box frame is still for normally for the old techniques. They will fix the, to the mandible and goes to the uh, frontal box. So you can fix as a cranial mandibular fixation. Rear maxillary means that we can never there will be no pin notes on the mandible, it only on the maxillary region supports the area. So it's like a U42 or only for the like that. old technique used. Most of the time they are using is uh, using the mini place and also sometimes we can use the suspension wire techniques. But we want to achieve the dental occlusion first using with the arch bar. Then only we can fix uh, with the mini plates or, or wiring techniques. So, this topic we have discussed about the leaf four fracture, leaf four one, leaf four two, leaf four three. Then, what are the radiographic uh, clinical uh, signs and symptoms for the particular leaf four one, leaf four three fractures? And what are the ideal radiographs we will be taking for that is oximeter trend uh, using with the uh, 10 degree that is Campbell and Trample lens and CT scan we can use. And what are the <coughs> treatment modalities for the middle state fractures that we are using with the suspension wiring techniques, mini plates, or the old technique like a box frame. These are the main uh, points in this thing will take practice thank you